guys, um, this this video today is um, on behalf of one of the members at People's Golf Club, and I'm just going to discuss about how often you should change your golf clubs. So, in my opinion, um, this is this video will all all be my opinion, obviously. So it has been instigated how often you should switch your clubs. They took. So there was a robot that went down to Old Trafford Golf Centre, um, and what they done was they done a, a comparison with three wedges. So there was a new one, an old one, and an, an even older one. So the newer one was just off the rack. So it was the first time that they'd actually taken any data or anything like that. The second wedge had performed throughout 125 rounds, so it was slightly older, and the next one had performed through 75 rounds of golf. So. What they what they didn't really speak about they didn't really speak much about loft angle of attack, dynamic loft spin loft or the loft on the wedges. So it was a very basic understanding. So we need to assume that everything was the same to pr produce the numbers basically. So we're, we're pretending that everything is the same. So what the readings um, analysed was that so we're talking about the new wedge here. So the new wedge was an SM, Titleist SM6 wedge, so it's last year's model, but the life cycle of Titleist is over two years. So, with the, hun with the club that was hundred had played 125 rounds, and also has less, so the club that had 100, had, on comparison from the new wedge to the one that had 125 rounds, the ball flight was a lot, ro lot lower, there was less rollout, so the new wedge was a lot a little bit low, um, lower ball flight, there was less run out. So, we're talking about the 125, the 125th round and the club that had performed over 125 rounds. So, it opens up questions how often you should change your wedges in your bag, when you should consider it. it it's down to it's a, it's a natural instinct, we need new wedges, but in my opinion, you should change your wedges when you feel like it. So if your grooves are going a bit um, rough, if you if you can't really see the, the club face, and if your grooves are quite dirty and they don't really produce much spin, then you should consider changing your clubs. So we're, first of all, I'm going to go through the bag. So I'm going to start off with the driver, and I'm going to work my way downwards. So let's talk about driver. So a lot of people think that they can buy their way to a better performance. It doesn't really work that way. So they come to the realisation that there's no such thing as a quick fix to golf, so what happens is what, what they get a driver that lasts and keep it um, for a while, and what happens is a driver, a, in my opinion, a driver should last four to five years. New drivers are very well engineered, so they're not going to start um, breaking, there's not going to be much indentation on the driver unless you, I've seen drivers in the past with professionals on tour, PGA, the European tour, have played that much that their, their drivers crack because they're, they're middling it every single time. So if you want a new driver, you get, get a new driver, but I would suggest that you get fitted for it. Too many golfers, this is a 75% of golfers buy clubs off the rack, so you might buy a driver that's too stiff for you, you might be hitting the ball left, you might not be hitting it as far, because obviously if you, you've got a downward angle attack and you've got a, a driver that's less loft, you're just going to hit that into the ground all day long. So you need something with more loft and a little bit lighter shaft, more flexible. So the technology has improved drastically over the last five years, as manufacturers suggest. But what what happens is the technology hasn't has improved not not much as the, the manufacturers people perceive that the manufacturers produce more benefits to the club additional features that will enhance people's ability. But to be honest with you, the general features are just basic. There's not really many additional features attached to that. So. I would say if you want, if you, you change your driver every four and five years, depends how much you, you play. But we need to worry about that. Unless there's there's no indentations on the face, a sky mark's not really going to affect the performance of the driver. So that's what we'll, that's driver cover. So you should change your driver every four or five years. Second concept we want to talk about is looking three wood, fairy wood. So three wood, five wood, rescue.
falls into that category. So if you're looking for more distance and consistency and control, um, you would go, so if you want more consistency, you would go with a three with more loft and more control, um, you would, or more distance, you would go with less loft. But the, dra the three was going as far as a driver nowadays because people can't hit the, the middle the middle of the club face with the driver, so they opt to go with a three wood, and the three wood they're flushing it every single time. So you've probably heard that before that a driver people hit three wood as far as a driver. It's necessarily down to the strike, so it's all about strike and club head delivery. But anyway, I won't I won't delve into too much detail about that. So the driver the driver is completely different club compared to three wood, obviously. So the three wood. I would suggest that you, it depends how often you use your 3-wood. Obviously you're going to use your 3-wood more if you struggle with a driver. It can be a bit more punishing off the deck, so, so the 3-wood the could take a bit more punishment off the deck. You might be hitting down into the ground, which could cause a top shot, and it can cause vibrations. So the tolerances might change, so the degrees, the lie angle, the shaft might be a bit damaged because we're hitting down on the wall a lot more with the rescue as opposed to hitting upping it with the driver, but anyway, I would say change your fairway woods every four or five years. But now I'm going to talk about is irons, so um, you've probably heard this before, but if you have forged irons, so let's say Mizuno, Ping, loft and lies can change dramatically with, with a lot of practice, so what I mean by that is with the forged club, the um, the force club's a lot softer, so the increments with the loft and the tolerances with the degrees of the lie angle can alter with practice and any other hit, any other hits. So over the last two years, I've been doing my my PGA training. It's been quite an eye opener for me to how often loft and lie should be checked. Do you know, there's been three or four people that have. Um, came into the shop over the last maybe six months. We've got loft and line machine in the shop, but it's quite an older model, so we don't really use it that much. But it's so important to get your loft and lines checked. You should... You, I was doing... I had a set of forged irons maybe last year, Mizuno ones, and what had happened was my lofts had changed maybe two or three degrees, so they were two or three degrees stronger, which made my ball flight go a lot, a lot lower. I was hitting the ball too far. Not that we can all complain with that, but my distance control was erratic, and I, I felt like I was a, I felt like the irons I had, I was hitting well, but I was just obviously down to the technical aspect from it and the the clubs. I just didn't feel like the the clubs were at fault. It was down to me, but generally the clubs were. I'm not trying to get. I'm not trying to say that the club that's the club the club's fault, but it's important to get your loft and lines checked, maybe. Once every year to see what the tolerances have changed, so the degrees increase, decrease, lie angle. So let's talk about cast heads. So the, the forged heads are a lot softer. So cast heads last longer, they keep their structure better. Um, manufacturers um, sort of differ between what you should, their, their regulations state that forged irons are for the higher handicap golfer, but cast heads are for the the lower handicap golfer. In my opinion is forged heads are softer so people that swing have less club head speed, they're not going to do much damage to the head, the, the, the lying's not going to be altered that much but with a cast head um, there's going to be a lot more force with the, the player that's uh, got inc very good club head speed and the downward angle of attack because it's going to there's going to be much more collision between the ground and the club but anyway, manufacturers are going for these forged irons that have got big soles, cavity backs that encourages a high, high launch, low spin shot. It's very effective. But what other manufacturers do, Callaway, um, all these manufacturers, you've probably heard that it, it's called vanishing, um, disease, vanishing disease loft. So what, I think that's what it's called anyway. But I was reading in a reading one of my assignments was Custom Fitting that just submitted a couple of weeks ago and I was talking about um, di di vanishing disease loft disease vanishing loft, whatever it's called, I can't really remember to be honest with you but um, so what were they were saying is they make their club stronger so let's say a 4 iron normally is 22 degrees 
What manufacturers do, they'll make the four iron the three iron because people perceive that they're hitting the ball further, but it's not. They've actually got reduced loft, and what that does is it gets people buying the clubs because they're hitting them a lot further. But down when it comes to what clubs to buy, it's so important to try and try and get fitted for your irons. It's, it's um, really important that you get fitted for your irons because um, you know what you're buying and. As I said before, 75% golfers buy clubs off the rack, don't really get fitted for them. So try. I would suggest that you try a selection of clubs, more cavity back, or some cavity, more cavity back irons, more weight in the head are going to produce a higher launch low spin iron. Um, I would suggest, I would keep uh, your clubs, so keep the grooves in your cl clubs sharp, or don't damage them, so loft and lies need to be checked on a frequent basis and the overall maintenance of the clubs need to be. So I would suggest change your irons, you need to keep an eye on the grooves. So what manufacturers are doing nowadays is between the grooves there's micro grooves, so the club face it produces more spin and more roughness so clubs last a lot longer and produce a little bit more spin but anyway that's irons covered we're going to talk about wedges now so I change my wedges every year but I, I play quite a lot of golf I practice quite a lot um, compared to a lot of other people who have got a lot more commitments than I do as I was saying in my previous video um, anyway you've got manufacturers Cleveland, Vokey, Callaway looking for rough the roughness which increases longevity of the club so you may perceive that wedges are quite expensive nowadays. The golf market's increasing price, so is membership, but so is everything nowadays. But if you go and buy a car, prices increased. If you go and buy a bag of fruit at the the local supermarket, it's increased a lot. So what what we need to do is the pros think about what what we want in the long run instead of the short run. So there's no such thing as a quick fix. So when we're changing our wedges. Um, what you need to do is the pro. So, for example, the pros change their wedges more frequently, but they've got access to that, and it's not really available to the, mo the, the majority of golfers. So, what we need to take into consideration is: do you strike the wedge consistency? So, do you take do you strike the wedge out the middle of the club most of the time, or just um, a few, very few times? So, what we need to take in to consideration is: people think that. You driver getting a custom fit is only relevant for driving. Driver, you maybe use a driver four, uh, maybe say ten times on your average round, but you're using your wedges probably three times that. So it's so important to get your wedges fitted. As I was saying, you might be missing your if your club's too upright. So the club's too upright. The plain lie of the club, although the leading edge is facing square to the target the plane lie actually aims left because the face plane tilt I won't really go into much detail about that but if your clubs are too upright you're going to strike at the heel and your ball flight's going to go to the left and if vice versa if it's too too up if it's too flat the plane lie will aim right and you'll hit the ball right because the cold face is open so it's so important to get fitted for your wedges as well I never really um, realised how important it is to get the correct spec for your clubs with your wedges, clutch, correct shaft, loft, bounce angle, all these things. I won't really go into that much detail about that. So new so when I, I've just bought new Titleist SM6s, um I feel like the brilliant wedges had previous to that had Cleveland two point but it's just a similar it's down to what feel, it's down to how it comes off the club face. But I feel like they're pretty similar clubs in a way. So I would suggest change your wedges every two or three years depending on how often you play and what the grooves are like. So let's say putter. So I've I've got quite a good quite a high opinion on putters and what I think is people switch in and out ever so often. Conf I would suggest if you change putter it's, it, your, it reflects your confidence. So if you change your putter every so often then you're struggling with confidence. But that's just out of my opinion. I mean, you could argue that's not correct. But anyway, if you think think that isn't correct, uh, let me know. And so uh, I had the same putter for maybe five, six years. I had the yes putter. But I'm quite a good putter, or I'd like to think I'm quite a good putter. And I 
my, my technique's not really changed throughout my whole golfing career. I know I'm only 20 years old, but I've played a, a fair bit of golf. So I would suggest change your putter and how it feels to you. How, how you're missing short putts, you're missing long putts, but get fitted for every club that you buy. Because if you don't buy the club, you're wasting more money. And if you sell it on, then you're even you're still losing money because you're never going to get back what you paid for it. So if this is brief discussion on what, what how often you should change your clubs. Um, so comment below. Let me know your thoughts. How old are your clubs? Do you agree with with the research that I've collected together? And if not, let me know your thoughts. If you find my tips helpful, subscribe to my channel at Jamie Allen Golf. It's free subscription or Follow me on all my other social media platforms at Twitter and Facebook. Thank you.